here we are with the Cato uh, ball winder. It's an electric ball winder and apparently unlike other ball winders when there is an issue if there's a knot or anything like that it will stop and I'm really impressed with that. I can't wait to try it out and so let's unbox it. Okay. I'm excited about this because the base or the, the base on this is supposed to be really big. Yeah, it's a fair size. Um, I got this because I really wanted to be able to wind up the thicker yarns, like the six and seven weight yarns. Uh, you can't do that with the other ones <clears throat> because then it falls over and then you have to cut your yarn. I'm really hoping that this is going to... Um, ball up a big cake so yeah so there's another piece this is the, the base that goes on oops on your table so you've got your gear system I, oh i like the fact that the gears are on the inside not the outside because a lot of times as you probably know when you're winding and the yarn slips off it will get all caught up in these gears and then you have a heck of a mess. So that's good. Oh, comes with its own little screwdriver. Yay. Oh. And I'm not sure. Oh, this is the, um, oh, okay. So this is the arm that holds your yarn. Huh, interesting. Not entirely sure how that works, but we'll figure it out. And then you've got the arm that it hooks to and your cord. And it's not, <clears throat> it's a USB cord. It's not a plug-in cord. That bothers me because we don't always have the, um, means to be able to plug this in to a USB port. So you need to have your plug-in attachment if you're going to plug it into the wall. So the instructions seem to be pretty in-depth so far. <laughs> I guess we'll figure it out as we go. Okay, so the first thing it says is you have to take your yarn guide and you have to put your this piece on here and you have to screw these in okay yeah like if you've got arthritis or something this is going to be a little difficult so you might need some help Oh, good lord. Okay, I'm probably going to have to speed this part up. <laughs> ah! Or I'll just, I'll, uh, there's two screws right here that you have to put in here. <laughs> and they're very tiny. They're very, <clears throat> very tiny. So I'll be back when I get that in. Okay, I got that on. <laughs> course I was I had it in the wrong hole and the screws go on this side not this side so yeah okay so <laughs> we're already starting really well <laughs> okay now I'm gonna put this on the table it's got a little screw here let's try and get that on here Okay. All right, that's on there pretty good. Now this, uh, this goes here, and you got to put a screw in there. Oh my good lord, you need really good glasses for this. Good grief. Oh, and 
don't drop your screwdriver. <laughs> oh, okay. We can do this. We can do this. Right? Okay, that's a problem. The screw isn't going in. Um, come on. Come on. Let's go. Okay, so I've run into a potential problem. The screws that they sent are not flat underneath uh, of the head, so they don't sit flush. And so the yarn guide just wobbles all over the place. So I tried putting in, you know, a different screw to try and see if I could guide it. Nope, that didn't work. So I tried putting the screw that they gave me in again to see if that was going to work. And the screw stripped. So now I'm trying to get... Uh, okay. Uh, I'm trying to get the screw out. And yeah, we're not starting off very good here. So I don't know if you guys can see this. Where are you here? Underneath the screw head right here, it's not flat. It's a cone shape. And it's the, the two, the, on the base and on here, it's not cone shaped. This one is cone shaped, but not this one. And this one is not supposed to sit in there so I don't honestly know what the heck to do here oh, I guess my dog is barking at a cat so we'll be back for the better part of an hour I was trying to figure out how to jerry rig this up so that it won't do this and I couldn't I couldn't figure it out. So I'm hoping that this is not going to be a problem. I'm really not impressed with that. <laughs> but I did get the rest hooked up and I did turn it to make sure that it works. Now the test. I'm going to start with just a ball of latte cake. Um, I got to figure out how to put this in the guide. I'm concerned with these springs that the yarn is going to get hooked into there, but I guess we'll see. So apparently you put the yarn over here, put it through the guide, and around the back of the guide. Why doesn't that make sense? Hang on. Oh, I gotta put it up through the bottom first. Then around the guide, through here. Okay. Now there's a special way apparently that you're supposed to put the yarn onto here Let's see if we'll bring you in a little bit. <clears throat> okay, now this won't turn. Okay. So there's a guide right here. Apparently, you're supposed to... Let's see if I can figure this out. Put it... You keep your yarn underneath that guide. Put it around... Okay. All 
right, and then you turn the dial and hope for the best. Now the on off, the, uh, the dial has like from low to high and I guess we'll see how this goes. We're going to go slow at first. I'm not holding on to the yarn at all. Okay, turn it up a little bit. See, no hands. Okay, so far so good. Turn it up a little bit more. Okay, aha, there we go. Now, the yarn is in a box and it's a ball so it needs it needs to tumble in the box right so now it's at a point where it's going mm, nope the ball needs to move so i undo the yarn a little bit turn it off and turn it back on again so as long as the yarn oops as long as the yarn is good on the ball it should be okay on there so if you're pulling the yarn from the middle of a cake um, or the middle of a ball it should come out nice and smoothly okay there we go again so this is going to be a pain in the neck if if you have your your um, yarn in a ball because then you have to keep trying to move it so that it will go so far the yarn arm isn't being isn't an issue, so that's good. Okay, so I just took the yarn out of the bo the box, and my yarn ball is running all over the place, but it's um, helping the ball winder a little bit. Okay, so that's so far so good. Turn it up a little bit more. So if there's any tension whatsoever, the ball winder actually slows down and it will stop if there's a problem. So far, so good. <laughs> you should see my yarn ball. <laughs> it's just going all over the floor. if it goes faster. Okay. Doesn't really like going faster. So we'll just keep it 
as the status quo here. See, the yarn arm does bounce around a bit. So it would be nice if this arm was a little more stable. towards the end of the ball. bit because we're almost at the end. And there we go. All right. Oops. So that's the end of the cake. Um, so that's done. Okay, now we take it off. Okay, so it did a nice little cake, but this cake is not um, any bigger than just a regular skein of yarn. So now let's try it with something a bit bigger. Okay, this is going to make me a bit nervous <laughs> because I don't want this to ruin my cake okay so this is the chenille home slim all right so let's see how this does now i'm going to attempt to take it from the middle of the cake or of the skein and of course with this you get a big yarn barf right so that's going to take me a second to undo okay so now here we are okay so we put it up underneath bring it to the front bring it around to the back and through the guide okay put it around twice and then put it underneath and up and over. Oops. Okay. All right. Let's hope and pray. Start off slow. Okay, it's grabbed its yarn now. Let's see how it goes. The coils don't seem to be catching on anything, so that's good. And there's 175 yards, 160 meters, 200 grams in this skein. So let's see if it can hold it all. Okay. Okay, we're coming up to the end of the yarn barf. So now we're going to see if it's going to 
be a problem coming out. Oh, see, as soon as it hits the cake itself, and there's a little bit of tension, it stops. So you have to turn it off, turn it on again. Okay, come on. So if there's any kind of a tension of any sort, it will stop. Which could be a good thing or a bad thing. I'm not entirely sure yet. See how there's a, a barf here? And the whole thing just stopped. not sure how I feel about this and for over a hundred dollars I'm not sure you have to really baby this until it's until it gets going okay now it should be going I'm not doing anything. It's just coming out of the cake or out of the skein. This does beat doing it by hand, but we'll see uh, how the rest of this goes. I just turned it up a little bit. Okay, the cake is now collapsing, or the, the skein. So we might have a little bit of yarn barfing happening. So far, so good. Now this is chenille, so I don't know what it would do with blanket yarn. Okay, we're coming up to the end of the cake, or the skein. And we are done. Wow, look at that. It did hold the whole thing. Hmm. Okay. Now, I'm going to roll this up. Let's see if I can get this to come off with it. Doubt it. <laughs> I was wishful thinking. Okay, here we go. And there we go. That worked out great. Oop. That worked out really good. Okay. Um, so far, I'm thinking it's good. Um, the stopping and starting thing is a bit, bit of a pain in the neck. But having said that, I have had um, the early models of the electric winders. And it didn't stop when there was a knot. And then it would just try to weed its way through. And then it was a hell of a mess. So the alternative is better than, than that. Okay, let's get a bigger cake and see what happens. Okay, so now we've got the Brunette Blanket Mystical. This has 300 grams, 220 yards, 201 meters. 
So let's see how this fares. I did the yarn barf ahead of time so that you don't have to sit through that. So, okay, up and through, over, up and around. Okay, now around, around, underneath, and up and over. This is just to basically, I guess, to make sure that the, the yarn doesn't slip out of the guide. So, okay, so here we go. Start it off slow until it grabs. Okay, here we go. Now this is blanket yarn, so it might be more grabby. We're just doing the yarn barf and now it's going to start coming out of the ball. Bam! The minute it started, it stopped it. So until we get this this yarn this um ball going, it's probably going to stop and start, stop and start. Okay. So it is more grabby with this for sure. So we have to just kind of baby it a little bit until it gets going. It is more sluggish with this, that's for sure. I've got it like way up and it is definitely more sluggish with the blanket yarn. velvet yarn or the chenille yarn works way better because it's more glidey this is not so I don't want to have to keep doing this the whole time come on Definitely does not want to come out of the ball easily. Oh, sorry. Okay, so with the blanket yarn, you're definitely going to need to baby it. You're going to have to just keep pulling it out. And that's a pain in the neck. So this is really good for other yarns, but the blanket yarn, you're just going to have to have to keep pulling it out of the ball. Even if you did it from the outside strand, it's still going to be a pain in the neck because it's going to, every time the ball turns, it's going to keep stopping. Keep hitting you guys. I'm so sorry. Okay, so doing it with this yarn, not my favorite task. Not even a little bit. What I am curious is 
if it's going to hold all the yarn. Oh, whoops. Oh, there's a potential problem. It just grabbed a bunch of yarn and put it through. Yep, and the arm is moving. Okay. Okay, so this is a pain in the neck. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip to the end of this when I get it all on because I have to guide this all out of the bowl before it goes on to the winder and that's you don't have to sit here for that so I'll meet you at the end okay so this is what we figured out it does hold the whole um, the whole skein but once it starts getting towards the end the yarn starts to slip under the lip here a little bit and then it just keeps, it keeps stopping and starting and stopping and starting. Okay. But if you can get through all that, it does hold the whole, what did I say it was? 300, 300 grams quite nicely. So that was my biggest concern. I mean, this is a big cake. <laughs> this is big. And it held it like a champ. That was my, my concern. So it does do what I asked it to do. So that is good. I like that. The starting and stopping thing, it's, you know, that's a personal thing. You know, it's, if you can get past that, um, it's a good unit. Is it worth the money? No, I don't think so. But, I mean, that's like over $100 Canadian. It's, I think, I think it's under $100 US. I'm not sure. But, um, am I glad I bought it? Yeah, I am. I think I'm going to get a lot of use out of this. Uh, I do have my other ball winder, my wooden one, where I have to crank it myself. I still absolutely love that one. This one I'm specifically going to be using for the big stuff. Um, and yeah. Would I buy it again, knowing what I know now? If the price was lower for Canadians, I would. Um, but I'm glad I bought it. Because now, now I have something that can hold um, that much. I cannot imagine having to hand wind this whole thing. Uh, so that was nice. That was nice. So that's it. That is my unboxing for the Cato um, ball winder. If you look up. Cato ball winder on YouTube. You will find other YouTubers that do a better unboxing than me and that have a coupon code. All right. Um, Refined Vibes has a coupon code. I do know that because I used it. And uh, so if you go check out her video, you can get coupon code for, from her. Okay. So that's it. That is it, and uh, I will talk to you guys later. Bye!